Greetings, Global Kingdom family, and welcome to Bahamas Faith Ministries YouTube channel, where we transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change through the message of the kingdom, the message that Jesus preached. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified when we are live or when new content is posted. We're excited to provide you with the information, inspiration, and revelation that produces transformation. Now let's jump into today's message. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome once again to our period of consecration and fasting. Tonight is the beginning of our time together. And so my topic tonight is consecration for great influence. Our theme for 2024 is kingdom influence. You know, in pursuit of influence, particularly uh, within the context of kingdom of God, the concept of consecration emerges as a powerful and transformative principle. And so when we think about being of influence, it's really about being transformative. It's really about uh, reaching out and doing something that is going to impact uh, the next generation and in our lives and those around us. So we should all desire to be of influence, whether it's in our family, our workplace, education, media, arts, social justice, government, politics, and, and whatever it is, and, and especially even in the church and in our communities, God wants us to be of influence. He wants us to, to be people who impact those around us. And so kingdom influence has to do, I believe, first of all, with understanding that we want to partner with God. And so in our period of consecration, we're really saying, Lord, I'm coming uh, in to want to be more like you. I want to partner with you. And so our time of consecration is a key way for us to start the year uh, to enable us to have the kind of influence God's desires of us. And so we're looking to God, we're looking to Him uh, to be the one who enables us to become all that He wants us to be in this season. And so when we think about uh, what it means to consecrate, let's begin by first defining what it means to consecrate ourselves. Uh, it means to set apart for a special and often higher and greater influence. God wants us to uh, be put in a place this year, I believe, so that we can be of greater impact than ever before. And that's why I believe uh, Pastor Dave was, was uh, given this topic by God this year, uh, so that we can begin to influence even more after having gone through uh, the previous year of being transformed, King Transformation. Now I believe we are moving into a season where God says, after being transformed from the inside, and uh, we now want to be of influence. And so we're continuing to be transformed by renewing of our minds according to Romans uh, 12 and 2, but we're now reaching forward to be an influence in those more so around us. And so where in the Bible do we see, first of all, Jesus, who is the standard of our faith? Where do we look to him as uh, the one for fasting and consecrating ourselves for, higher, for an higher end? Well, Jesus in, in the book of Matthew, we see where he begins his ministry, Matthew chapter four, verse 11. Jesus, uh, at the time of his temptation, uh, he showed us how uh, to fast for a period of being more of an influence and an influence in the kingdom of God. And the scripture says then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness a dry or unrest place. And whenever you're going through a wilderness experience, that's exactly what it is. You're, you're going through a dry place in your life and a dry season. Um, and this is the time the scripture says he was, he was led into the wilderness uh, to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Many times when we are going through a wilderness experience, the enemy shows up and uh, he comes to tempt us in those seasons. And Jesus was no different. Here at the beginning of his ministry, he is tempted. He goes on to a fast, consecrating himself to the Lord. And the scripture says, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. In other words, he was saying, use your power for yourself and not for God's use. So the enemy will come a lot of times when we're going through a dry period and tell us to focus on self. How can you best please yourself in this moment and this time? 
People are tempted when they are alone. Jesus was alone in the desert. And the enemy came to tempt him uh, to satisfy himself. Jesus answered, it is written, man should not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, we're gonna have greater influence uh, and, uh, we, in this year. We've gotta be able to understand that in our most vulnerable moments throughout the course of the year, the enemy will show up. But that's why we're gonna to need to get the word of God in the inside of us. That's why we've got to consecrate ourselves from the very beginning of the year to say, God, more of you and less of me. I am giving up my body. I am presenting my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. I am giving my body to you so that you can flow through me in this season more than ever before. So fasting and consecration prepares us for the year of testing. I believe that's what it is, you know. But every day, the Bible says, every day but there's going to be trouble. But how do we confront this world that is a system that is contrary to the kingdom of God? There's, there's this kingdom uh, without and then there's a kingdom within. The kingdom of God is within us. So we're tapping into the kingdom of God that is within us so that we can be of influence. This event showcases, this temptation showcases an example of using fasting um, as a means for consecration and preparation for a higher calling. Fasting really is the voluntary abstinence from food, activities, or pleasures for a specific period of time, often accompanied by prayer and seeking God's presence. And so when we're going through this period of fasting, we're really saying, I'm giving up, I'm abstaining from the things of this life so that I can be put in a place to have more of God. Jesus depended on God's word in times of testing in order to have influence over the tempter. He was giving up himself. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness so that he could be in a place where God can strengthen him through his time of fasting and consecration. This is how we get to be more effective as believers. God wants to be in us in a greater way. So why fasting and consecration in the month of January? We always start off our year this way. We do this because we want to be able to experience at the beginning of a year, the greater power of God to take us through. And here are the reasons why. Every year we go over these 14 reasons why in Bahamas Faith Ministries. And so I just want to go over them with you. Uh, one is we do it for spiritual discipline. You know, we have to discipline the body. We have to beat the body under to bring it under subjection. So this is spiritual discipline. It's a time of abstaining for a greater influence in the earth. It also, point number two, it increases our spiritual capacity. In other words, when we go through a period of fasting and consecration, we are going through a period where God, we say, God, I want to discern more. When we are eating and we are going through life and we are, we are allowing the body to do whatever it wants, it does not have the capacity to discern spiritually. So we are creating an opportunity for God to flow in us in a deeper and a greater way. Point number three is this, we want a clear and sober mind to hear God's voice. When you consecrate yourself, you open yourself up spiritually to hear God's voice. You can hear it and you can have more sober, you can make more sober judgment decisions. So in your de decision making, you have a clearer mind to make decisions. Many great decisions are made during our time of fasting consecration. If you want a business deal, now you want to hear from God concerning your business deal. Well, this is the time now to make decisions because you're going through the fast consecration. You want to you want to make uh, life changing decisions. Well, it's through the fast and consecration that you can hear the voice of God greater to make those decisions. Um, point number four: You want a pure heart and mind so that you can be sensitive to God's spirit. When we have a pure mind and pure heart. We are sensitive to what God is saying in that season in our lives. And we can have a greater impact, greater influence. Why? We can hear the voice of God. During this time of fasting and consecration, also, we hunger for God and His Word. This creates a longing in our heart when we are in fasting and consecration. 
it creates within us this desire for uh, to make better judgment decisions. And that's what God allows it. The capacity comes for us to make better judgment decisions. Uh, physical health, when you fast, you get rid of all that junk that's in your body that has been stored up for so long, in your, in, within your, especially within your digestive system. Those things are removed from you. Toxins are in your body. They are removed through the, uh, through this time of fast and consecration. There's also a loss of weight. Uh, I know a lot of us uh, tend to want to, after spending so much time eating and celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in December, uh, this is a time now to get rid of that excess weight that we put on. It's also to purify our body. Uh, our body becomes purified, as I mentioned already. Those toxins begin to come out of our body as we fast, as we wash them out through drinking eight glasses of water minimum per day. There's also freedom. There is a breaking of chains in our lives. In other words, those habits that you we would have had, you're actually disciplining your body and disciplining your mind uh, to get rid of those chains, those habits that you've had over the year or over the years. Many persons have found themselves breaking uh, those bad habits that they have. And in, and in two weeks, it gives you an opportunity to start new habits in your life, like reading the Bible, reading it daily, creating a new habit uh, that maybe if you hadn't been doing it regularly. Um, you also find yourself wanting to give more. There is a proven fact that when we, when we go through the time of fasting, you want to give. Give of yourself, give of your substance, give of your time to others because now God is flowing more freely through your life. Also, point 11 is your light shines. I mean, the light of God shines through your life like never before. And people see the love of Christ emanating from you because you have, you're seeking more of God and God is there more, have access to your heart and to your life. God also uh, disperses his angels even more during those times because you, when you seek God, his presence comes and his angels, uh, they, they seem to be working a whole lot more in our lives simply because the presence of God is greater and the power of God is greater in our lives. We also find during time of fasting and consecration, our prayers get answered, it seems quicker. But we, we hear the voice of God, and so the answer that we need comes so that we can uh, move on with our lives and make those decisions as mentioned before. And finally, one of the last benefits is this, not necessarily the only and last one, but there, uh, in terms of what we're recording here, is that intimacy with God, the mind and the will of God becomes more clear. What is God's mind for the season? And so a person who wants to have greater influence will hear God's voice even better and they will know his will better during the time of fast and consecration. So consecration for greater influence is also likened to building an altar. In uh, Genesis chapter 12, we learn that at very strategic moments in Abraham's life, he built an altar to the Lord. Uh, and so that was very important uh, for him. Uh, as, a, as a man who sought the will of God and also a man who was recognized as one who had great faith. He is the father of faith. So in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham built altars on three separate occasion, on great occasions, each marking a significant moment in his journey of faith. We, uh, as we go through this time over the next 14 days, this is a journey. Uh, I'm encouraging us to create monuments well, Abraham built physical monuments, but we built monuments in terms of our spirituality. We devote to God, we celebrate God in these moments as we go through. So let's look at the first altar, which is found in Genesis chapter 12, verse 6 to 7. It says, when Abraham first entered the land of Cain, he traveled to Shechem at the Oak of Moriah. The Lord appeared to him and Abraham responded by building an altar. In other words, he marked a consecrated spot of encounter. This was the place where he, he was able to recognize that he met with God. The altar marked the beginning of God's promises to Abraham regarding the land of promise. God had promised Abraham, and not only that, he had promised his father, Terah, to leave Ur and to go to a land and to go to Canaan. Abraham and his family had stopped off on the way and had not proceeded on to Canaan. But in Abraham's generation, God was seeking to make available to Abraham the opportunity to have access to the promised land. And so 
that promised land was Canaan. And so we're looking at Abraham moving towards the land of promise and making an encounter with God by creating a monument. So an altar, the second altar we see here is he then built an altar at Bethel or Ai in Genesis chapter 12, verse eight. After leaving Shechem, Abraham journeyed south and camped between Bethel and Ai. There he built another altar. This altar signified Abraham's continued reliance on God as he moved through the land. And so Abraham was really acknowledging everything. He's saying, God, I want more of you. So he was acknowledging his need for God in his life. And that I believe is the way that we, when we journey over the next 14 days, we want to acknowledge God at certain points. When we hear his voice, when we see the answer to his prayer, we want to say, Lord, I thank you, celebrate worship and say, God, you brought me through this. I am so grateful for what you have done. And so the number three altar in, is in the Negev. And so in Genesis chapter 12, verse nine to 10, as Abraham continued his journey in the land, he experienced a famine and went down to Egypt. God provided in the season. So in the, as he returned from Egypt to Negev, he once again built an altar. Why did he build an altar? Because God fed during the famine. When there is an encounter, like he did for Abraham, we must continue the pattern of building altars after the significant encounters with God. So as you journey in your time of 2024, fasting, consecration, and counter the voice of God, like Abraham, take these into consideration. As it may be a time to reflect and a time to respond with worship, faith, and dedication to God because we want to mark those moments as saying, God, you have been with me. I celebrate you. This will be a habit that we want to take throughout the course of the year because we want to not just fast in January, but begin to start a habit of having a consecrated and fasting lifestyle throughout the course of the year. We want to take the moment of moving from this moment into a period of continuous fasting. Fasting and consecration also leads to a lifestyle of an influencer. And so that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to become, we want to gain a lifestyle of being an influencer. Influencers gain spiritual clarity. They do that through consecration. And they do this to understand their purpose and the direction that God has for their lives. When a person wants to be an influencer, they go through a period of consecration uh, because they always want to have the mind of God. They always want to know, God, what are you saying in this season? Lord, what is it that you want me to do? So their lifestyle is that of fasting and consecration. Influencers realign their values. And so that's so important for they realign their values uh, through fasting and consecration to get a higher spiritual assessment of their priorities because you know if you want to be an influencer you've got to prioritize your life and to make sure that you're on cue you're on key with where god is leading you uh, not only in this year but every day and every year of your life and so great influencers people who want to be uh, influencers in the kingdom of god they are always realigning their values they're always looking at the word of god it says this is aligned with the kingdom and the way to know it is to read the word of god and it's to also be consecrating seeking the mind of god uh, point number three is this influences gain empowerment and dependence on god he said lord i'm depending on you abraham depended on god which leads when you really depend on god it leads to a sense of confidence and strength in god and his kingdom when you look beyond your own ability and you're saying, God, I want more of your ability to anoint my ability, then I know that I can be a great influence in the kingdom of God and I can advance the cause of the kingdom of God. So I want to look at three keys for greater influence. How do we, how do we become a great influence in the kingdom of God? I want to take the moments and moments now and begin to look at three, what I think are three very important keys to becoming a great influencer in the kingdom of God through the act of consecration. So if you are going to do any kind of business with God and be an influencer in 2024, we need to function based on the law of faith. Faith, I believe, is one of the key principles of becoming a great influencer in the kingdom of God. 
and through the act of, of, of consecration. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. A, uh, uh, those who are consecrated for greater influence, they are constantly wanting to have faith in God. They are believing, first of all, that uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. They want to please God in everything. And faith is the key that unlocks that ability to please God. We must operate in faith. Abraham was what? A man of faith. And so we use him as the example. So what is faith? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith gives us assurance. It's confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Abraham and his family, they left everything to follow God. God told Abraham, leave your household, leave your family, leave those whom you were familiar with and go to a land that I will show you. And Abraham left in faith. This year, I believe God is going to ask us as those who will be great influences this year in the kingdom of God, that God is going to have to tell us, he will speak to us to leave certain places. We may have to leave our job, we may leave our country, we may leave uh, different things that we were uh, so accustomed to. We will leave them behind in order to follow the will of God this year. But consecrated people will hear the voice of God when he would say to leave certain things alone and to take up a new thing in order to advance the cause of his kingdom. So it may mean some giving up and uh, in order to press forward this year, but we need to hear the voice of God to tell us when to leave and when to go and where to go. Kingdom influence and having the faith for kingdom advancement, you have to have faith in these, these things, I believe. Faith in God's promises. You've got to, as an influencer, a great influencer who consecrates their life to the Lord, you've got to have faith in his promises. Wherever God promises in his word, you've got to believe that it will come to pass. Uh, faith for spiritual breakthrough. You've got to have faith to believe that what you may see, uh, what is seen, can also be destroyed through faith. You know, we've got to believe that God will open up a window. God will open up the window of heaven and pour our blessings upon us. So even when we're going through the course of this year, the obstacles, the resources that we're going to need to carry out the things that God wants for us to do in his kingdom, we've got to believe that if we ask, if we seek, if we knock, God's going to do it. He's going to provide it for us. Faith in God's guidance, just like Abraham, to leave and to go wherever God says for us to go this year and the things he's going to say for us to do. We've got to trust in his guidance. We must have faith, personal faith in transformation, that God will transform us and transform our situations so that we are able to do the things he's called for us to do. Consecrating helps to cause our circumstances and our mindset to shift so that we can believe. Faith in kingdom advancement through fasting. We've got to believe that whenever I, uh, God calls me throughout the course of the year, calls us to fast and say, you need to push away the plate, that the consecrated life is going to make the difference in 2024. We've got to be able to say, I'm going to give up in order to get more of God to press forward. Faith for spiritual empowerment. We've got to believe that if we're going to be empowered as an influencer, as somebody's going to do great things for the kingdom of God, we've got to trust that God is going to give us the power to overcome the obstacles that will come our way. Faith also in God's provision. Whatever God has called for, He will provide for. We've got to trust that, Lord, but if you've called for me to do this in this year, you're going to provide for it. You're going to give me what I need so that it can happen according to the word you spoke to me in January of 2024. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to push forward to get it done. Secondly, we want to pray. Our key point number two is, is if we're going to be consecrated for great influence, we've got to pray. We've got to determine that, Lord, this is going to be the year that I pray to you. I've had conversation with you, a simply conversation with God. I'm going to talk to you more, God. I'm going to call upon you more. I'm going to ask you for things that I don't understand to explain it to me by way of your Holy Spirit. So prayer is going to be, uh, prayer really is influence, is a dependence for answered prayer. Uh, in order to have f uh, faith, we have to understand that we want to have influence and we want to be dependent on answered prayer to get the work done this year. We've got answered prayer really requires that we call on God. If we're gonna, if we're gonna have an answer to, to we've got to continue to call on Him 
ask, seek, and knock. That's what the scripture says. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to ask, we're going to seek, and we're going to knock. Answered prayer for greater influence. Um, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 helps to clear this up. He says, call to me, God says, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. When we're in a place of consecration, God will tell us things, some things that seem unsearchable, seem like you can't understand it. But God says, when you consecrate yourself to me, he says, my hand will work in your life like an invisible hand and cause things to happen in your life and show you things that seem that you couldn't even understand it before. But then you begin to understand and know what is the real divine will of God. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 7, he says, Ask, seek, and knock. We spoke about it already, but he says, Ask, seek, and knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This year, doors are going to open for you like never before. I just believe that. I believe that as we seek to be those who are going to uh, be used to God for it by God to influence in the kingdom of 2024, doors are going to open that you thought were shut, that were closed, and that business opportunity is going to come, that opportunity to, to get into uh, that place of influence, whether it's in media, whether it's in your family that you want to have influence, you've been trying to, you've been praying for them for years, but all of a sudden you're going to find a shift that you're having influence that you never thought before. That boss, uh, a difficult boss on the job, you're going to find yourself being able to influence. Why? God's going to tell you the right words to say. Uh, that, hu that husband who's gone astray or who does not know God. God will show you this year how to have a quiet and chaste spirit to cause him to come into the kingdom. You're going to have influence like never before. Why? Because in this pe period of consecration, God is going to show you the how, how to get it done, how to make it possible. He is going to cause that door of opportunity, that window to open up so that you can walk in and possess the land that God has for you in 2024. Consecration. We want to consecrate ourselves for greater influence. We do this uh, in order to have true influence by first of all repenting. Um, if we're going to, if we're going to have influence this year, we have got to learn how to repent. And those opportunities, in those times when when we know we are wrong, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, we got to have a change of spiritual commitment, change of commitment that I'm not going to seek to only have. I'm going to have my way this year. We can say, God, your way is the way. And we have to repent and consecrate ourselves. There's going to be alteration in our circumstance and situation. That's going to be a shift really in our behavior and our habits. Like I mentioned, when you consecrate yourself, all of a sudden those chains in your life is going to shift. So there's going to be an alteration in your attitude, in your behavior as you consecrate yourself continuously throughout this year, as you live a fasted life. Change is going to come. It's going to be changed. It's going to be a difference in your circumstance and your situation. You're going to have greater influence. Why? Because you're living a consecrated life. Uh, you would have thought that, man, this thing could never change. Uh, this, this circumstance that I'm in could never change. My husband, my wife would have never changed. Well, the change begins with us. And when we change, and when we change, we change because we're consecrated. Then they change because we change. Your conversation, you have to change the way that we speak what comes out of our mouth and so that comes from changing first of all your mindset because whatever is in you is going to come out of your mouth so your conversation must change as an influencer there must be a revolution within you um, you must have an uprising uh, around you because whatever is going to change around you a revolution taking place it's got to first of all got to happen by you becoming angry to make a difference to cause it to happen you've got to get angry about whatever that habit is whatever that circumstance it seems can change you're going to have an influence because god's going to show you how to have righteous indignation so that you can move forward and change that situation there must be a makeover it will take place because you're consecrating yourself you love physical uh, makeover you're going to have a new body your outward uh, parents will be as a result of the inward sign that you're changing from the inside. Your outside will change. You will have a new body, a new mind, a new attitude, and you can be a greater influence in the kingdom of God simply because you have consecrated yourself. So our point three of consecration is a life really dedicated to God. That's our point three. Those who live consecrated lives are dedicated to things of God. In 2024, is about being an influence so we can live more for God and achieve His success. You know, it takes consecration to live for God. So His power 
can flow through us and we become transformed into the image of God. The process to being an influence is simply this. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed, we're being changed into his image with everlasting or increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. God is the Spirit in us that is changing us. So each day of the consecration, as we sacrifice food, we will slowly be transformed to look more like the glory of God, the image of God, and then we can be more of an influencer for Christ. I believe as we close out today, that the way that we can do this, assure this, is as mentioned, every year we know we read the Bible. And I believe that as we go through a period of reading the Bible, we must commit ourselves to weekly reading His Word and a daily reading His Word, and we will see the foundation of our faith grow. We, this will be enable us to share wisdom and valuable information in every situation of life. When we read the Bible, we get a perspective that is eternal, and God is able to cause us to strengthen those around us as we apply the principles of His Word. So I encourage you to read the Bible as we do as a church together. Read it every day, read it through so that you can be able to learn what it is and how it is. I believe, lastly, as I make this final point, as we close out the session and we go and begin our time of fasting and go into a time of prayer, that if we read and study and meditate on one scripture every week, we learn one scripture. We'll end up at the end of the day having 52 scriptures we've learned from the year. We will be transformed ourselves as we meditate on the scripture. So today I say to you, this evening as, we, as I end here today, I say, consecration for greater influence begins by us committing ourselves to God by saying, Lord, I want less of me and more of you. We give ourselves over to Him, surrendering ourselves to Him through prayer, fasting, and consecration. I thank you for being a part of this time consecration because I believe you're going to be a better person and we all will be a better person as a result of consecrating ourselves and we will be of great influence as we seek and serve the Lord. God bless you in your time. I will see you at the end of it in 14 days, a transformed person, a person of great influence in the kingdom of God. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. We pray that the message today has blessed and encouraged you to go out and live a transformed life. If you were impacted by today's message, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with your friends and family. To see our full programming listing and service times, or to find out how you can be a part of what God's doing here at Bahamas Faith Ministries, visit our website today at bahamasfaithministries.org. Together, we can continue to transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change.